FCC family, we are excited that you joined us for service today. Whether you're here in person, watching online, or listening by radio, we consider you a part of our family and you are very important to us. If you're a first time guest or you haven't been here in a while, we have a special gift for you. So go ahead, raise your hand, and our team of elders will be happy to bring you a gift. We also want to connect with you and share who we are as Family Christian Center. So go ahead and fill out your Discover card and make sure you turn it into us during the offering moment and you can place it right inside the bucket. Family, if you've ever wanted to be a part of one of our incredible productions, well, now is the time. It is Jesus of Nazareth season, and we are so excited to have our auditions and involvement day on Saturday, January 14th at 12 p.m. So this is your opportunity to bring the entire family. You can audition to be one of our actors in the show and be on stage or if the stage isn't your thing, please come and get involved in one of our behind the scenes departments. So right now I'm highlighting concessions, but that's not the only one. We have hair and makeup and props and animal ministry. There is so many opportunities for you and your family to get involved. So we will see you on January 14th at 12 p.m. You can also register and get all of your audition scripts online through our app at fcc 4 me or visit our website at refugeproductions.com. We are excited to lift up the cross of Jesus of Nazareth in 2023. January 4th at 6 p.m. will be a special anointing service with our very own Pastor Steve Muncy. He will be laying hands and anointing each and every one of us. So make sure to bring your friends and your family so that we can have an amazing service and prepare our hearts for 2023. We are excited for what God has in store in the rest of this service. So make sure to follow us on our social media at FCC for Me and Refuge Productions. Check us out on our website and let's stay tuned to hear what else is happening at FCC. Welcome to 1230 Family. What a great crowd we have here today. The very first Sunday of 2023. I'm excited to have you in the house. If you don't have one of these, just raise your hands. Our ushers are prepared to wait on you. And then we'll welcome streaming Facebook, YouTube, all around the world. We welcome you right here to Family Christian Center. We're preparing to turn back for the first time this year our tithe and offering. And you can join right along with us. Click it on that and then follow all the instructions. Well, how many were here last night? Yeah. Oh, what a time we had last night, was it not? You all didn't want to go home. We prayed out 2022 and shouted 23 in. It was a, it was a great, great time. The Binions were outstanding. Pastor delivered a great word. I had the privilege... I had the privilege of taking the very last offering of 2022, and today I get to take the very first offering 
Are you excited? Any cheerful givers for 2023? It's going to be a great year. It's going to be a great year. I couldn't let this day go by without finding the perfect scripture and saying the right words that set you up, not only for the rest of the year, but for the rest of your life. If someone came to your house and sat across your table and said, I know what you've been through, and uh, I'm about to change that, I've got the money and the means to be able to set you up, to give you a business, to give you money, to prosper you, you'd be interested in that. I'll, he says, you can have whatever you want. I'll take care of it. You don't have to worry about it. It's already paid for. I'm reading from Jeremiah. I, I had to read it today. For I know the plans I have for you, says God. All right. We can go home now. <laughs> He goes on to say, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, but to give you hope in the future. It's already taken care of. And then he says, you can come back to me, and I'll answer all your prayers. I want you to know as we start out this year, your steps are ordered by God. It's already taken care of. And where God leads you, He'll pay the bill. It's already taken care of. Are you ready to give an offering for the first time this year? Are you prepared to do it? You give as our singers come to sing. tell you what he did. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. Just in time. I'm gonna praise his name. I'm gonna praise his name. He saved it's just the same. Oh, I'm gonna praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Now listen, y'all ought to clap your hands like it's first Sunday. Come on. Church, wait a minute, hey. Say, look what the Lord, you ought to, you ought to look what the Lord has done. Touch somebody next to him, tell him what he did. He healed my body, he touched my mind, he saved me. Just in time, I'm gonna praise his name. God, honey, he saves just the same.
My, my. It's going to be a great year. I can feel it. <laughs> Where's my phone? I had a phone. Lift your phones up, all those of my uh, streaming, Facebook, YouTube. This year is the year that we've been waiting for. This year, you're not going to be broke anymore. This year, you're going from not enough to more than enough. God is getting ready to pour it on you. We lift this up and call it blessed in the church state. Amen. God the glory and the credit that here's the words that he said the best is yet to come this is I want to encourage you to increase your faith for this year where every demon trembles I can agree to join with you and place my faith in agreement when I know who our provider is. Amen. This is a house of you got to use your faith. You, you, you can't struggle with how is he going to do it. He's just going to do it. You can't figure out how it's going to be done, but you just believe it's going to be done. You know that you are to hang on to the promise, be obedient to what God asks you to do no matter what. Because God has the ability to put things back in proper perspective and order. So come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is an awesome miracle. There is a word that is coming. And remember, the word is what changes you. The Bible is very powerful. Why? This is an awesome it connects with you. It pulls you right in. Sometimes God puts you in situations so that he can show up and show you who he is. We're in this for the long haul because our steps are ordered by God. There's resurrection power. Redemption and faith, when they come together, will produce something beautiful in the end. Regardless of what you're seeing, you need to know you've got seed in the ground. Are you looking at what you don't have? Or are you looking, right, at what you have sown? I'm not staying where I am. I'm going somewhere in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, come alive. In the name of Jesus, this is a house of miracles. So if I tell you something in the spirit, how fast are you to catch it? Faith says God's going to do it. Grace says, God already did it. Faith comes by what? 
hearing the word of God. And when I have faith in God, I know that my mind is all well. I am free. I am strong. I know who I am. I'm a child of the living God. I am holy and I will live holy. I know who I am. I believe the Lord can work. I believe the Lord can move. I believe the Lord has something to say. I believe even though I don't see it, I believe and know he's working behind the scenes. Rise up, oh my church, for I am with you, and you now shall see my glory. Church, go therefore, and signs and wonders will follow you when you speak the name of Jesus. Demons will bow their knee when you speak the name of Jesus. Fear ye not, for God has not given you the spirit of fear. I come to tell you today that you are the head and not the tail, that God has given you the victory. I have the authority under the power of the Almighty God to declare that the best is yet to come and there is a resurrection that's about to happen in your life. Stand to your feet and clap your hands and shout Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beast of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people I have formed for myself. They shall declare my praise. First Sunday and everybody clap your hands and excited to be in the house. Excuse me, Marcus, I, I don't know why it's not coming on. Maybe because I dropped it, I wrecked it, or the devil's mad at it and stole it, killed it, whatever. So I'll be using the hand mic today. I'm so glad to see all of you, and, and, and I was very, oh, thank you, Chris. Let's give Chris Jamerson a great big hand for making that video. So talented. Um, I, I was so moved by all of the things that all of you have accomplished in uh, 2022, all of those salvations, all of those, um, all of those things that we did, you should give yourselves a hand clap and clap for everybody else that is around you and those that are watching. Channel 26 called us the U, or I should say Tavon called them, and we tried to get the Arbitron ratings of what was watching us every Sunday morning. And they were so impressed that we are one of the highest viewing on 
um, Channel 26 or 630 in the morning on Sunday, we are averaging about 150,000 viewers every single Sunday morning. We want to give all the glory to God for all of what God is doing. Uh, I'm very, very proud of this church, very proud of all the workers, everyone that labors. When Jesus said these words, when he said, the harvest is plenteous, the harvest is ready. People want to be saved. People want change. People need help. People want their marriages to be successful, their children to be successful. There are people, maybe even today, but there are people that they want, they want to break the addictions that are in their life. You may know them by their addictions or you may know them by their troubles and their sickness, but there are many people that want to be healed. Without all of you, this oasis that God has given to all of us, that when people come here or we minister to people by feeding, one of the things that was, uh, uh, we, don't, we don't have footage you should be very proud of this, and that is we try to base our church in making everyone who gives, who is a part of this church, that you will get a great reward when you go to heaven. That when every one of you and everyone watching and everyone being a part of this church stands at the judgment seat of Christ, that the Lord will look at you, that I won't be there, it'll just be you. The Bible teaches us he will say these words, thou good and faithful servant. The Bible also says, your name is not written, depart from me. There's a passage in the Bible that startles me, and this is what keeps me pastoring. This is, this is what keeps me going to work on behalf of the body, on behalf of all of us. When Jesus said, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was thirsty, and the thirsty there means for the gospel's sake, the wells of salvation. When I was thirsty, you gave me the gospel. You gave me a drink. It's evangelism. It's reaching people. Scrooge, hallelujah, uh, hotel, hallelujah, all the illustrated sermons, everything that we do, it's reaching. It's giving people a drink of salvation. When I was in prison, you came and you saw me. The Bible says that Jesus actually takes believers who stand there. You can read it in the Bible. And the Bible says, depart from me, I do not know you. They will say, but we spoke to mountains. We were people of faith. We believe. But Jesus said, but when I was in prison, you did not come and visit me. When I was hungry, you did not feed me. When I was naked, you did not clothe me. And when I was thirsty for the wells of salvation, you did not give a drink. So the basis of this church, the foundation of this pastor, this leader, this lead pastor that I have a responsibility and have for some 38, 39 years, has been based on we must feed people who are hungry. Number two, we must clothe people who are naked. When you give in the offering, and for you that do not participate, I encourage you. This is the first Sunday. Anyone that gives their tithe in an offering, you are connected and will get the reward. Even though you don't go to Operation Care and bag the food, give the food, as our volunteers of 30 to 40, some under Tina Adams and, and, and Jay and those that lead, which is a different building. We've invested five to $6,000 a month in rent, keeping the electricity of all the ice boxes and the walk-in freezers to minister to people who are hungry and we have clothes there. We give them clothes. When you when you give, when you put in the offering, you are connected. Paul says, how can they hear unless they're sent? Scripture bears out that when we give our money, we are connected to every person that we feed. In other words, you may never go to Operation Care, 
But when you give in the offering, you are connected because it is the offerings that pay for the food, pays for the rent, pays to feed and clothe. When you give your offerings, you're able to help us with the lights and to do what we do in Scrooge and White Throne Judgment and, and all of the productions that we do. And even though that we uh, put a price on the tickets, we are, we are still, all of us are connected. And when you get involved, when you stand at the White Throne Judgment, because you support it, everybody say support. When you volunteer, when you're involved, when you're giving, when you're praying, early morning prayer, you will get the credit for, did you see, I thought I saw the figure since 1985, 600 and, and I may get this wrong, but about 600, I think it was 680 some thousand people. We're headed for a million people that we have fed. Everybody shout, I feed them. When that offering container or your phone, you're enabled to transfer your tithe and an offering, that makes you a part of reaching them. Reaching people who are hungry, people who need to be fed. Having this building so that people can come as an oasis. The couple may be here today. You may be in our service. I invited you. They came off the streets yesterday, a beautiful couple. They just said, we could not pass this place. We had to come in here, find out about the services. We want our marriage, our relationship to be restored. When you give, don't think in terms you're given to a preacher with a purple tie. Don't think in those terms. Don't think in those terms. Don't think about this drywall and the electric bill that's 30000 a month or whatever and the air conditions. All the staff, actually it's a hundred and thirty to $150,000 budget a week to operate everything that we do. The $13,000 that we spend for our storage for all the sets per month to keep all of the things so that we can make it good. The flower vases, everything just for you and your friends. When you stand at the judgment seat of Christ, every soul, did you see, how, what was that? How many got salvations that was up there? Was it, well, how many? 30,000 30, names. Everybody say, I. When you stand, if you don't give, the high consequences is this, is that you're not a part you're not supporting, you're not involved in reaching the four aspects of feeding, clothing, getting people saved, prison, and I'm going to talk about prison in just a moment, and, 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 um, and getting the gospel out. When you give, don't think, oh, it's tithing, I have to give it, I can't afford not to. Let me, let me just say something about tithing. This is the first Sunday. Let me just tell you that God says, prove me now. But, but let me tell you something when God spoke to me this morning. He said, not only do I tell the people, you do it and prove me. Even when you say you can't afford it, you prove me. And then God spoke to me today and said, you better tell the people when they don't do it, I'm going to show up and prove what I do. I will mark them with curses. I will put curse on their door. The devourer will destroy them. Their sons and daughters will fail in life. But if you say, God, I believe. And you say, God, I want to give my tithing. God says, let me tell you what I'm going to do for you. Not only am I going to open the windows of heaven and pour out, but I'm proving myself to you. And he says, God says, I have the best insurance policy. I will rebuke the devourer. I will bless your children. Everybody shout first Sunday. 
when you connect yourself and you die, or the rapture takes place, and you stand before the Lord, and the Lord looks at you and say, says, to, what is your name? And you say your name, and he says, your name is found in the Lamb's book of life. Please excuse my imagination because in the book of Hebrews, the Bible says, submit to them that have rule over you. In other words, submit to the pastors. Now watch, for the Bible says they give an account for your soul. Meaning I have a responsibility as long as I'm here on my watch to make you look good. That when you go to the judgment seat of Christ... The Lord will say, "Thou, oh, so you're from Family Christian Center. Excuse my imagination. Jesus is judging you and says, I like that church. They did my story great. And Jesus says, you went to that church? Yeah, I didn't do much, but I just gave my tithes. Good. Because when I was hungry, you fed me. And let me tell you, let me tell you this that should excite you about our prison ministry. Nikki Ferrantello, which has become an ordained pastor of our church, is now taking the prison ministry to a whole new height. We have built a building inside of Westville. Nikki Ferrantello, who was a businessman in construction, retired, not retired, but sold it. And begin to put his time into prison ministry. They allowed him to build a warehouse to train prisoners how to be an electrician, how to be a carpenter, how to have a trade. Oh, it gets better. All of this is done in the name of Family Christian Center. You're, you're getting the reward. So much our prison ministry is affecting that OSHA, anybody that knows anything about OSHA, to have an OSHA card. In fact, if you get an OSHA card today, it's $680. They have given us over, I think, sixty or $70,000 worth of OSHA cards this year. And Mickey Ferrantello has graduated prisoners who, when they leave, already have an OSHA card to get a job when they come out of prison. So effective is Family Christian Center and Mickey Ferrantello, who, by the way, prays here every Tuesday morning. He's the pastor of Tuesday morning prayer. We have a pastor here every morning who prays. Westville came to him and says, we've tried every kind of religion. We've tried every kind of pastor. Mickey, we want Family Christian Center to start a church in this prison. And today I'm happy to announce we have a Family Christian Center in Westville being pastored by one of our pastors, Mickey Ferentella. Everybody say, I, I am in the prison. When you give, you are in that prison. Uh, I, I'm going to leave some names out. Mickey would help me. John and there's some, uh, John and some of our high educators have put books together. We are now going to Michigan City, but our books, we, they have written books on how to develop Someone who's in prison that when they come out that they will have a job that they will get involved in our communities And this program is going to go nationwide because the governor and the state of Indiana has looked at what we have done now Nevada with um, tell me uh, Hugh Hodges of course was the beginning of our prison ministry. Hugh is watching today he has also established and I forgot to tell you this. We are in Las Vegas, largest women and men prison. And we are the, and God bless, we should be saying hi to them. We are the only minister they put on television in all of the prison in Las Vegas. When you give, and the Lord says to you, so you have a family Christian center. Yes, sir. 
you gave. You came to see me in prison. Lord, I didn't know you were in prison. Yeah. You gave, you supported the vision. So when you come to this church and you give, don't just be given to say, well, there it is, God. You're given to the world, to missions. You're given to the productions. You're given to every soul that is saved. And when you stand at the judgment seat of Christ, I want the Lord. I hope I get to be there next to you when he says, thou good and faithful servant. That's when you probably will wink at me and say, thank you, pastor, for pushing us like crazy to do what we needed to do. And everybody say amen. Amen. I, um, I want to um, tell you that God has given me a word, and last night I started it, and I don't want to take a lot of time, but I want to talk about vision. We never usually have one service on Sunday, and I drove up in the parking lot, and people were coming and going because of habit, and next week... Next week, we will start our regular services at 8.30 and 10.30. Everybody say 8.30 and 10.30. And And we will will begin, we will begin to, we will begin to, uh, and Wednesday night will be the first service. I'm going to do something I I haven't done in years. I I can't remember when I've done this. But I personally want to anoint every person. I've been told by God that the oil that I put on you is going to break the yokes in 2023 in your life, financially, whatever it might be. So when you come Wednesday night, you will see that I will have the elders on either side. You'll go right between us. It won't touch you, but I will anoint. I know this. I know that usually we have the elders anoint you, but I, doesn't matter how many people here, we'll get it done. You're just going to walk through and there's going to be a touch of oil and I am going to touch you and I'm going to tell you there is going to be an anointing this year on your life. You don't want to miss Wednesday night, the first Wednesday night. Before, and this is a part of Isaiah 43 today, everybody say new beginnings. There was a meeting and, and I, I, I lost the page, so I'm going to paraphrase and share with you. There was a meeting in a Methodist convention in the 1600s. A preacher got up and said, I see God. I see ministers of God flying to take the gospel from country to country, city to city. You heard the murmurings and complaining in this Methodist convention in the 1600s. And ministers begin to boo him and say, you are crazy. God only makes angels to fly. And if he wanted us to fly, we would have wings. He said, I tell you that God is coming and We're going to cover the earth with the gospel and we're going to be able to fly. And a great outburst happened in this Methodist Christian convention. Mr. Wright, Reverend Wright, stood up and was the loudest protester against this brother. Sir, you are of the devil. You have had hallucinations A spirit is upon you. You have brought into our denomination. This is foolish talk. Sit down. Great outbreak. And this brother saw it in the spirit. Reverend Wright told his boys, get up, let's leave. This is absolutely foolishness that anybody would say that. Reverend Wright had two boys that he got up that day. They were 9 and 11. And they walked out. 
But it happened to be those boys who invented the first airplane. That's a true story. So I've come to tell you there is a new beginning. That whatever you have gone through, God is getting ready to open up the rivers. God is getting ready to rain on dry land. God is getting ready. Somebody shout a great big amen. Amen. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing, and it shall spring forth. And shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beast of the field shall honor me, meaning, he says, the dragons. And that simply means Babylon and the people of the world. They will honor me. The owls will honor me. And they will know what he's saying is the wicked will honor what I do for the righteous. For the Bible says that he's going to transfer the wealth of the wicked to the righteous. He goes on to say, I'm going to give a drink to my people, my chosen. I'm talking to all of you. The people I have formed for myself, that they shall show forth my praise. A few days ago, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and, and just, you know, I don't hear the audible voice, but he's going to speak to me. And he said, there's going to be a new beginning in 23. I kept saying that. I kept praying. Yeah, I, that's nice. I know we make new resolutions. It's a new year. God, that's good. That's good. I'm going to, I'll say that. Unbeknownst to me, as I was hearing this new beginnings, I'm a number man because there is a Bible a book in the Bible named Numbers. And God gets into numbers and each number represents something if you understand numerology and study it. God is a God of numbers. He speaks through numbers just like he speaks through the stars. And we could go through Uh, Several numbers, and you would understand five is grace, seven is complete, 12 is governmental order and perfection, 10 10 also deals with the perfect thing. So I looked up 23, having no idea what 2023, and 23 means new beginnings. It it also means death, but you can't have a resurrection until there's a death. And you can't have a beginning unless there's an end. And when I saw that this time period, we've all lived, we could have lived 100 years ago, we could have lived 50 years ago, we could have lived 500 years ago, But we have been born for such a time as this. And this is not an accident that you are here right now in this place watching whatever you're doing. That God has brought you to this year. In the Bible you will find many times in the year of King Uzziah. God specifically targets time and targets years. He saw all of you in your mother's womb. He knew there would be a 2023. He also knew that 23 would be a new beginning. But before there would be a new beginning, there would have to be an end of some things that needed to happen in our lives. When the Lord began to show me this, I began, to, I began to also look into 23, and 23 also deals with this. It deals with revolution, new beginning revolution. It also means, it also means change, progress, innovation. 
It also means transformation. I'm talking to you today. You made so much last year, but God's getting ready to transform a new beginning. That your investments, that what you have put your shoulder to the wheel to do, your gifts that you have, there's a door opening that no man can open. There's about to be a transformation. Oh, somebody shout transformation. There's about to be change. Somebody say change. Now, last night I did this somewhere here last night, and my grandsons bought me Alexander McQueen. If you're watching me, sir, these are a lot of money. You ought to be paying your tithes, the family Christian son. And my grandchildren said, Papa, you need to start preaching in, I call them tennis shoes. But these are not $99 tennis shoes. I feel uncomfortable wearing these with these suits. But really, it's now the style. I promise you I'm not giving up. Because when change comes, it's just very difficult. I don't, I don't really think. So I asked somebody older like Terry Owens and he says, the black ones look better. I, I, I talked to my granddaughter and she says, you look cool. My point is, is that when the transformation takes place, it's going to be uncomfortable for a little while. But there's a new beginning. There is also in the process of what's going to happen to you. This is going to happen in the next 30 minutes before we leave one another. And I like, I, I like this statement. I, I said it last night. Now, this is not the end. It is not even the end. It's, it's, it's not even the beginning of an end, but it is perhaps the end of a beginning, which Churchill wrote. And I want to tell you that when this revolution, and it's on every person here today, because you have come into a dark time zone of God's, God's prophetic utterance. And whoever accepts it, you better get ready. There's a revolution coming into your families, into your money, into your health. Now let me tell you about this new beginning. Not only is there going to be a transformation happen to all of you. Some of you have never seen the money that you're going to make in the next 12 months. Some of you have never experienced a good doctor's visit in over 24 months. But the next time you go to the doctor, what was in the past is about to be a new beginning. And if there is such a thing as age reversal, God's about ready to put resurrection power in your body. When new beginnings happen, you have a revolution also taking place, which means, it means, revolution means it's forcible overthrow in favor of a new system, a sudden radical or complete change. When things begin to take place, this won't happen in one day. Doors are going to open and you're going to wonder how in the world. Some of you are going to change jobs and you're going to wonder, I wonder if the new one will treat me like the old one. You're going to have to put on some new shoes. We used to sing a song, and I don't know, Simpson, if you, I, I don't even know the whole chorus. It says, There's a new man walking in my shoes. I don't 
do the things I used to do. There's been a change. There's a new man walking in my shoes. And I've come to tell you today, God's going to get today in the next few moments, I'm going to ask God to change your shoes spiritually. Your steps are about to be ordered of the Lord. Now you're sitting there today and you're saying, those are great words, Pastor, but you don't work where I work. You don't live with the family I live with. You don't know what I go through. You don't know the pressures. You don't know. I thought it would be better at Christmas when the gifts were open, but it just seems like it just got worse and the expectation of all Christmas and everything and all the parties, et cetera, and, and being with my relatives, I thought it would be different. It's just, it's just, it just seems chaotic in my life. That's because God is bringing you to an end. Because when it ends, you want it to end because you don't like certain things. And so you have got to declare, this is the end. The end. Somebody shout the end. And forcibly, you begin to declare a new beginning. Now, I want to tell you, God does not give you automatic, even though all of you are on the ride of your life. You've just stepped on a train. You stepped on a plane. You stepped in the time change of 23. And in your cabin and in your environment is new beginning. But until you get the ticket... Until you demand I'm going somewhere different. Until you speak, there is going to be a new beginning. In my house, in my life, with my children, with my money, with my business. There's going to be a new beginning. Now in some cases, the past is not bad for some and it's all right to remember but not to look back we are to always press when you become a millionaire then God is setting you up to become a billionaire when God sets you up to make a hundred thousand he's getting ready to make it available two hundred thousand you got one house and you paid it off he's going to give you seven more that you can rent out But you must, you must know that God has ushered you in a time period. You could have died a month ago. You could have died six months ago. People all around you have died. This morning, right now while I'm talking, 96 people die every single moment. You could fall out with a heart attack right now, but you're alive for one reason. That God is saying, if you will declare a new beginning, I'm going to open up a door that no man can shut. Listen to these words. To be a believer as one should be, he cannot remain silent. Let me read it this way. To believe as one should and to remain silent is impossible. Now, let me read that again. To believe as one should and to remain silent is impossible. For in the beginning was the Word. The Word was God. The Word was manifested in the flesh. All beginnings start with your mouth.
For the apostle Paul says, we have the same spirit of faith. I believed, therefore I have spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. When I declare to you, you have stepped in a time zone that God has already predestined. And God has seen every one of you where you are. I'm talking to people today, your picture is going to be in Fortune 500s. Ah, uh, you're going to listen to me today. God has said to the devil, you go first. We've had all the dirty language and dirty music and dirty dancing and dirty movies and dirty habits and dirty killers and gangs and destruction in this generation. And all of us are probably wondering how bad can it get? I want to warn you and tell you, God always says to the devil, you go first. Meaning that if you're going through anything in life, God has said, you go first. For the Bible said the enemy comes in like a flood. But then God, no, he stands up and says, enough is enough. I'm going to raise up a standard. I'm going to take the poor and make them rich. I'm going to take the weak and make them strong. I'm going to take them and make them the head and not the tail. I'm getting ready to show my people off. Everybody say, I want. You got to open up your mouth and show God you really want this. Say, I want a new beginning. I want to show you what happens when you speak with your mouth faith. Some of you have never said this before. I want to be a millionaire. And I'm not talking about going and buying a lottery ticket. I'm talking about, and I'm not talking about that you're a millionaire overnight because if you can't handle the $200, especially when you pay your tithes, you're not going to be able to handle $2,000. And if you can't give your tithes on $2,000, you you're not going to handle $200,000. And if you can't pay your tithes on $200,000, he's not going to give you $2 million. But if you can pay your tithes on $2 million, he's going to give you $4 billion and You must say, I believe this is a new beginning. When I say new, I want you to shout beginning. This is a new. Yeah. Everywhere in that Bible, to my shocking surprise, first time in the last 60 hours, every time there is a request or there is a new beginning in someone's life in the Bible, God dispatches angels. And they are there, oh, you're going to love this, with a special purpose called blessing. Only for those that will speak faith, who will say, there is a new. The moment that happens, let me show you illustrative wise. When God created the world, the Bible says in Job. Now evidently, it, my understanding, I'm still searching this out, that when God created the angels and they're not like human beings, he must have put something in them. We know he put praise in them because they worship him. But evidently, God put something in these angels, his angels, that when anybody starts a new beginning, they dispatch in order to be given orders by God by your side. 
Let me show you what I mean. When God was creating the world, he told Job, where were you when I was creating the world? And then God says, while I was creating the world in the beginning, the sons of God shouted for joy. Meaning that angels, when there is a new show up, getting ready to be ordered by God. What's getting ready to happen to you if you speak the word of faith new? A revolution, a transformation. Let me show you what I mean. When one person repents, which represents death, the end. I don't want to be a sinner anymore. Forgive me of my sins. It's a new beginning. And the Bible says the angels rejoice over one that repents, which means a new When Jesus was born in Bethlehem, the angels could not contain themselves in the celestial glory of the heavens because in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and now the word is made manifested, laying in a manger, and the Bible says the angels jumped out of the heavens and they begin to sing. It is a new beginning. Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth. It's a new. Yeah. Revelations 2.17, they don't have this, but watch this. This is new beginning. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna and will give him a white stone and in that stone a new name written which no man knoweth saying, he that receiveth it. Today, before you walk out of here, not only are you going to get spiritual shoes, but your name is getting ready to be changed. The world will call you by your own name, but God will not call you by your real name. He's going to give you a new name, a new name written down in the Lamb's book of life. So let me bring it to a head to excite you, to pray for you. No better, no better illustration than Jacob who stole his brother's birthright, which Jacob means cheater, deceiver. You may think your boss has blessed you, your business has blessed you, Somebody has blessed you, and they can do that. But there is another blesser. That's going to change your name. Now, let me encourage you, because all of you, you're going to have a new... You're speaking it right now. God is coming. The minute you say beginning, angels dispatch. I could, I, could go through, uh, I could go through content after content in the Bible when beginnings happen and there's always an angel there. So let me bring it down to you so you feel good about yourself because there's some people here today I sense, well, I'm not a good person and my wife is sitting next to me or my husband's sitting next to me or my kids or, or somebody knows I, I just haven't lived quite right. 
We're not here to judge you today. We're here to tell you that if you will strike new beginning, it doesn't matter what you have done. God will not hold that against you. There are two boys, Esau, Jacob, for you that need to be caught up on the reading of your Bible. There are two boys. They're the grandsons of Abraham. God has said to Abraham, I'm going to bless your generations. We get to Jacob and to Esau who are twins. Jacob is a deceiver. He's a manipulator. You ever met those kind of people? They're smooth, they're smooth people. Con artist. They come in your life. You pay every time you go to the restaurant. They never pay anything. And when you quit paying, they run to the next one who will pay. They're con artists. They look who they can deceive. Jacob cons his brother Esau out of his birthright, which will give him the right to go in to his father and feel good about how he tricked his father, which had Isaac then bad eyesight to bless him. He's a cheater. He, he, he's a manipulator. He's one of these people that can smile to your face and know exactly what to say. But on the inside, they're a deceiver. It's quiet in here. I'm not talking about you. You ever met those people? You lend them money, they never pay it back. They manipulated you out of that. When you're around those people, you better hold on to your jewelry. They'll want to borrow your ring to see how it looks and just walk away like, where's my ring? They're manipulators. So Jacob goes in and gets his father. He steals his father's blessing. And you, you will read in the Bible, the Bible says that es Jacob, I love. Esau, I hate. And that's pretty strong language. If you break that down, you'll, you'll, find, you'll find that that language gets a little softer because uh, the hate there we could talk about, don't have time. I'll give another Bible study on that another time and, and let you know what that really means and why he said that to Esau. Because, he, because God actually blessed Esau. And believe this or not, God blesses people he hates. But they're not going to be able to get a new... Jacob deceives his brother, and let me give you one clue about Esau so you won't fall into this temptation. Esau is only living for the moment that will pleasure him. People who live for the ovation today but don't care about tomorrow or their children or down the road. They have no retirement. They have no future. They have no legacy. They are engulfed and inebriated in the drunkenness of the moment of the good feeling. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's the reason why Esau said, take my birthright. I am more interested in soup because I'm starving to death. And I'll sell it. It doesn't mean anything to get gratification for one moment. Got that? That's Esau. Let's talk about Jacob now. He gets his father's blessings. His brother finds out about it. His brother said, I'm going to kill my brother. What do you do when your brother wants to kill you? You leave town. Hurry up and hear this quickly. Jacob goes 400 miles away from his mother. Now, his mother, Rebecca, is a little bit into what Jacob is doing. Evidently, there's some favoritism here, and be careful about favoritism. It might hurt you. Let God choose. And 
be no respecter of person. I want to say that again. I want canceled culture to hear this. God is no respecter of persons. And people who follow God should be no respecter of persons. I don't get enough amen on that. Don't worry about what somebody's done to you. God will take care of them. And too many of us are trying to play God because we try to take care of it. And God backs off and says, you want to take care of it? Fine, go on, do it. You want me to take care of it? I'll kill them. They don't touch my anointed. You're precious to me. You let God do it. Get into the professional forgiving business. Forgive everybody. I got to hurry. So let's talk about Jacob runs out with his daddy's blessing. He says, ah, my daddy's blessing. Mama says, you need to go 400 miles north to my brother because your brother's going to kill you. He goes 400 miles north. Now watch this because many of you will relate with this, that when you struggle in life and you don't mean to do the things that you mean to do, which could be multiple things, that we all do not want anybody to open up our closet. <clears throat> ah, you're a holy bunch. <clears throat> you will notice that if you do not seek for yourself a new beginning, you will struggle all the days of your life. Jacob said, I'm blessed, I'm chosen. My name is Jacob. He meets a girl called Rachel. He falls in love with her immediately. Reading the Bible, he kisses her on the first day he sees her. <laughs> on the first date. <laughs> Be careful when you kiss on the first date. You could be kissing the Antichrist. He's a smoother operator, salesman, deceiver. And it's her cousin. It's his cousin. And he don't tell her. You're too good looking. Kisses her. Has no idea what he's kissing. And goes crazy over this woman. Finds out that her daddy is Laban, mama's brother. Where mama said, go and hide. He'll hire you. He's a very wealthy man. Rachel, the girl he kisses, takes her to her father. The father says, oh yes, you are my sister's son. Go to work for me. Unbeknownst to Jacob. God always sends deceivers and manipulators to another manipulator and to another deceiver because they all attract their own kind. People who don't pay their tithes, they stay with other people who don't pay their tithes. People who don't go to church, they hang with those kinds of people. Negative hang with negative. He has no idea that his, his, his future father-in-law and his mama's brother is going to give him hell for the next 20 years. I got to hurry up here. I got I to tell you about new. Yeah. And we're going to pray and, and, and the spirit of the Lord is going to fall on you and you're going to no tell him what's going to happen by the end of the day of New Year's Day. And this week, big things are getting ready to happen to a whole lot of people here. Now, I'm telling you this because I'm not condemning you because I'm going to try my best to make some of you who are con artists with God feel good. So just say amen in advance like you're the most spiritual person here because nobody will ever know but just you and God. And Jacob thinks he's got the blessing so he says to his 
Uncle Laban, I'll work for you. He then has the courage to say to his uncle, I would like to marry Rachel. He says, you can marry her. Oh, that's great. He probably runs out, gets the second kiss. <laughs> mm, baby, I love you. We're going to get married. <laughs> Motel 6 is down the road, and they leave the light on all the time. She said, when did daddy say we could get married? I didn't get that date. I'm going to go back to him and ask him. Walks into the office, sir, uh, in the next few days, we'll get married. He looks at Jacob and says, seven years. What? Seven years. You can marry her in seven years. You're going to work for seven years for me. At the end of the seven years, the wedding takes place and Rachel is coming down the aisle. And in those days, they wrap up the bride. You can't see the bride. That's where we get the custom of the veil. So they wrap the bride up until she looks like a mummy and you marry someone you can't see and then you whisk her up and put her on a camel or a limousine and drive her to Motel 6 as Jacob did and he puts her as he lifts her up he puts her down in the room and says there's the bathroom change I just bought Abraham Victoria's Secret and put it on and this is going to be a great night. And when she comes out of the bathroom, it's not Rachel. It's a one-eyed woman who is ugly. Read it in the Bible. She's ugly. And she stands there saying, I'm ready. runs back to his father-in-law and says, you gave me Leah. I did. Because I can't get anybody to marry her. Because she's ugly. But before you can have Rachel, you're going to have to have Leah first. Now you're going to have to work another seven years for Rachel. Let me quickly go to the story. It gets worse. He steals from Jacob, and the Bible says that Jacob said, my father-in-law stole from me 10 times in 20 years. To the point, watch everybody, new! That Jacob started speaking new beginnings by, the Bible says he took a branch and he made, uh, he made spots on the branch and he put them with his sheep put him with his donkeys, put him with his camels, and put it with his cows because Laban would steal because God, you know, the blessings were coming on Jacob and his sheep were growing and so Laban would steal them and they would get in huge arguments. Finally, Jacob said, it's time for a new. And the Bible said, now watch, he spoke to the cows and the sheep, ma, roosters and chickens. The pigs, the cows, ma, the horses, the camels. And the Bible said he put a branch and spoke and said to every cow, every pig, everything he owned, you give spotted babies so I know what's mine and it will never be stolen from me again. I got to hurry. It's one service, so we just, just a few minutes here. You don't have nothing to do anyway. In fact, most of you have spent all your money. You don't have any more money. And if you wanted to go somewhere, you're broke. This is the cheapest place you can come. But what you don't know is that God's getting ready to take the poor and make them rich. Let the poor say, I am rich. And the Bible says on the 20th year, he walked into Laban, his sheep, all of his stock, all of his money was bigger than Laban's. 
And Jacob had his two wives, Leah. I'm going to tell you what he kissed on the first date that he thought, this is the girl I'm going after. I'll risk my whole life for her. Never asked God, just did it. And when they were leaving, Laban had gods in his house. They were statues. And that's who he worshipped. And the Bible says he went after the caravan of Jacob with thousands of sheep, thousands of camels, and all of the servants, and his families, Leah, and there was a couple of the families, and Rachel. Rachel still had not given birth to children, and she was furious about Leah. Could Leah could have kids just like that. And remember, let me give you a little, let me give you an anecdote, music department. Leah realized she would never be loved by Jacob. And when it came to the fourth child, she named him Judah, saying, I will praise my God whether he loves me or not. And Jesus came from the tribe of Judah. And when the father-in-law caught up and asked Rachel to dismount off the camel, she said, I am on my period. I can't get off the saddle. Why? Because she had stolen her father's gods. And when her second son was born, Joseph first, and then you know him by Benjamin, but when she was dying, giving childbirth, she named him Benoah, which means I have never served your God, Jacob. I have served idols and I have played the game in your life. I never was converted to the God of Abraham and Isaac. Be careful who you kiss. Jacob is moving his flock back now, quickly moving his flock back. This is the part I want you to get clearly and loudly. Word has come to him, your brother's coming. As he goes back home with thousands of sheep, you can imagine moving thousands of sheep, moving thousands of cattle, all of that, all of the servants. He was very wealthy. He was a multimillionaire by now. Jacob was. But because Jacob was a deceiver, a manipulator, he paid the price. And I'm going to tell everybody, you live that lifestyle, you will pay the price. Even though there might be a blessing on you, you'll only go so far. When he got to the river, he told his wives and children, you go on. He took them across the river into the land of Canaan. Word got to him, his brother had 400 men, Esau, and it was coming to kill Jacob. And Jacob took all of his children, took all the cattle, all the men servants, and then he turned around and waded through the water. And they said, where are you going, Jacob? And the Bible said it was in the middle of the night. He took them to the other side and then he walks back to the other side and proclaims, my brother's coming to kill me. I have manipulated. I have been a cheater. I have done it my way. I have not done it God's way. I, 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 and all of a sudden in the night, in, 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 in the night, Jacob must have said these words. I need a new. And all of a sudden an angel was standing there. And the minute that angel was standing there, Jacob said, I need a new beginning. I'm sick of my past. I'm sick of going through this hell. I'm sick of being Told my brother's going to kill me. I'm tired of all this pressure and all of this stuff. I need a new. The Bible said the angel showed up. And the Bible said Jacob went into revolution. He went into forcible activity. He hung on to that angel. And that angel said, let me go. The sun is coming up. 
which means there are night angels and there are day angels. So in your house, there's a changing of the guards. The same ladder that Jacob saw with angels ascending and descending. They're night angels and there are day angels. And this night angel said, let me go. And Jacob said, I will not let you go. I need a new beginning. I need a blessing. Who am I talking to today? You came January 1st. You're ready to say, I want a blessing. I'm going to end this here. Sun starts coming up the end. He said, let me go. That angel even smote him in his hip. Till Jacob is just struggling until this day the Jews will not anything they will not eat any animal they won't eat a lamb they won't, any, they won't eat anything that's near the hip because of Jacob and the angel said I will bless you and Jacob said that's what I needed a new beginning but before I can bless you I've got to change your name I'm going to change your name to Israel, which means having the power of God. You will become a God fighter. Many of you have got the first blessing, but God has come to dispatch an angel. There's a second blessing that's going to make you a billionaire, a millionaire, a successful father. Break that habit. Your families are going to be blessed. Your children are going to rise up with favor. The mighty power of God is going to be in your life. And he limps when the sun's coming up across that water. And Rachel and Lee and the rest of the kids said, what happened to you? It don't matter what happened to me. I can't run like I used to run. But if you knew what I had, for greater is he that is in me. Cancer, you took your mark on me. Leukemia, you took your mark on me. Divorce, you took your mark on me. Rape, you took your mark on me. But I've come out on the other side with a new name. Two minutes. And the Bible said that Jacob, now named Israel, takes his kids and his wife to go in front of him because his brother's coming to kill him with 400 men. The Bible said he gives them sheep and cattle by the thousands and sends them up ahead. And the slaves that work for, they know him by Jacob, but now it's Israel. Your brother has sent these as a gift. I don't need those gifts. I'm already rich. I have 400 on my payroll. Go kill my brother. And the Bible said when he rode up, my name is Israel. I'm no longer afraid. This is a new beginning. And the Bible said he fell down and he bowed seven times before his brother. Because when God blesses you, it'll bring you to your knees instead of walking around like you own everything and you're somebody because the power of God will bless you with humility. I don't normally get to preach this long, but I only get to do this one time a year. So next week it goes back to 30, 40 minutes. And the Bible says that Esau fell on Jacob's neck and kissed him. 
your worst enemy is getting ready to meet you and put their arms around you and say, Jacob, I love you. I love you. Everybody shout new. Stand to your feet, please. For all the new people here today, we do believe in speaking in tongues, so don't let this, don't let this scare you. It's a God language. It's the flowing of the glory of God. Everybody lift your right foot up just a little bit. There's an angel just changed the right shoe. Everybody lift your left foot up a little bit. He just changed your shoe. There's an angel standing over you because you begin, you've been saying beginnings and they have jumped out of the heavenlies. They're standing right there, right next to you. And they are declaring to you, you're getting ready to be blessed like you have never been blessed. And God's getting ready to give you a new name. And this ought to make everybody feel good. God never let the manipulation, the deceiver, the con artist, the cheater, or the sinner ever stop him from blessing Jacob. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Come on, thank you, Lord, for your mercy. I want to tell every wife in this room, something's going to happen to your husband. I want to tell every husband, something's going to happen to your wife. I'm not getting loud enough. Somebody believe with me. I want to tell mom and dad, something's getting ready to happen to your children. I want to tell every grandparent, God's getting ready to save your whole family. I want to tell everybody that's poor in this house, let the poor say, I am rich. It's anointing. Everybody in this building say, oh God, because I'm going to the cross, I can raise that. Say, oh God. Take the old. Say, take the old. Make it new. Let a new beginning happen. There's an angel been dispatched. Just change your shoes. Get ready, you're going to walk in new steps and new directions. I want every wife to give your husband that chance. Every husband, give your wife that chance. Give your children the chance. Even give the people who have talked about you. You love them. They may not ask for your forgiveness, but Jesus forgave them anyway when he was on the cross they didn't ask him will you forgive us he forgave them anyway hold on excuse me I don't want to scare anybody I don't know anything about this but the Holy Spirit is speaking there's a transformation your name is changed Somebody's name is on a pile. You're on the bottom of some corporation and there is excellence getting ready to happen and an angel just took your 
took your paper, took your name and put it on the top. And Monday morning, somebody's going to walk in and said, this is the one that we call. And it's going to blow your mind when the email is open. And you're going to wonder what in the world is going on. Some of you are going to go to the doctor's office this week. And the doctor's going to say, don't know what happened to you. But you're as good as new. Some of you are going to break habits. Things are going to happen. Money's coming from the north and the south and the east and the west. Get ready. And everybody say, oh God. This is a powerful thing we're about to do in 23. First Sunday is take Holy Communion. It's a new beginning. A new beginning. It's a new beginning for Pastor Steve. It's a new beginning for you. Pastor, you don't know what I've been through. My wife knows, my husband knows, my children know. It doesn't matter. Because once God forgives you, it don't matter what anybody thinks. Because God not only forgives, but he forgets. If you have a communion cup, lift it up in the air. If you don't have one, wave your hand. Ushers, would you look for the hands that are raised to take this special moment? When you take this, folks, let me tell you what I want you to do. I want you to lift both hands after you take it. And I want to, I'm going to pray the power of God come down upon you. Just close your eyes after you take Holy Communion and lift both hands as a sign of surrender. And an angel is about to rewrite your future. Everybody say new beginning. Now, Father, we take Holy Communion because we will live. We will not be sick. In the name of Jesus, we take your blood and your body. Let us take Holy Communion. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken. Just 30 seconds, everybody. Lift both hands. Something, something's happening. It's all right. If you don't understand, just do it anyway. Here comes an angel. Here comes an angel. The angel's coming right to you. New beginnings. Thank you, Jesus. Head, lift your hands. Hallelujah. 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 That's it. You're doing good. Hallelujah. Sing it again now. Come on. Hallelujah. It's all right. Don't be ashamed. Just put a hand up in the air. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're doing good. You're doing good. Hallelujah. Everybody put your hands down, close your eyes, and say these. I, I'm going to ask a question. Every person in this room that said, Pastor, there's some things in my life, but today is a new beginning in my life. Pastor, what you spoke to me, I have said it out loud every time, beginning. And Pastor, I'm going to believe that what God is doing to me right now is going to change my whole future. If you're that person, lift your hand as high as you can lift it right now all over the building. Now everybody else, lift your hands. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, every person. Healing. Healing. There's eight people in here. There's eight people in here that are struggling with cancer. Come here. Come here. Come here. Hallelujah. Come to me. You got cancer or some kind of cancer. Come, come, come to me. Come to me. Don't be afraid. Come, come. I have some form of cancer. I have a growth. Come, come, come. Somebody say, God, you're healing. Come, don't be afraid. Come, come. I know that there are people, well, what's he going to do? It's all right. I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to declare you're going to be healed. Just stand right there. That's two. There's six more. Come on. There's number three right there. Come on. Come on. Somebody clap you. I'm going to prove to you God's talking. I'm going to prove to you God is in this house. Three. Four. Four. Come on, four more. Come on, four more. It's all right. Don't be afraid. Five. Come on. Some kind of cancer, some kind of growth. Don't be afraid. God's going to heal you. God's going to heal you. Come on. I know it's a long walk from the balcony, but just come on. Come on. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. I know you're there. So if you won't come forward, it doesn't matter. I'll, I will tell you God's going to heal you. Everybody say, in the name of Jesus. Every person that has cancer. It's a new beginning for you, ma'am. You're going to go into age reversal. Your body is going to be healed of this disease. This great man of God will be completely healed. This is a great man. God's already healed him. It's going to be complete healing. Complete healing of cancer. You're going to be healed in the name of Jesus going to be healed in the name of Jesus. New beginning. New beginning. One. I don't know who the two are out there, but I really want to lay my hand on you. God will heal you. I'm not, I'm not trying to embarrass anybody, but I'm going to tell you, God's going to heal you. Everybody lift your right hand and say, oh God, oh God. Prosperity, prosperity is coming. Is coming. Now put your hand on your heart. I want to tell everybody, I know there's some people speculating, so I thought God said eight. Well, if you'll just help me pray, they'll come. They're there. They're there. They're, they're, they're there. God's healing you. You may take this lightly in conclusion of the service. Now, remember, Wednesday night, I'm going to anoint everybody. I'm going to put oil on your head, and it's going to be to break every yoke that happens, I believe, in 23. Next Sunday, 830, 1030. And all of you will love the fact I can only preach 35, 40 minutes. This is an unusual. How many is glad you came to the house today? Now, hallelujah. 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 Break every debt that's in this house. Incredible things are going to happen to you in the name of Jesus. I want you to listen. I do not want to glory, but I want to help you to understand the power of speaking it into existence. Two Wednesday nights ago, the weather said we would have the worst blizzard we have ever had. We stood here on Wednesday night. I, I stood here with the congregation and I spoke to that snow. And I said, go north. Every snow plow, all the salt. I didn't pray for the cold. I guess I should have taken care of that, but we didn't pray for the cold. We prayed for the snow. You may think that is a light thing, but I'm going to tell you the Bible says fervent people, people who pray, have the same anointing as Elijah who can stop the rains. I want to tell you, God promised us on Labor Day when we filled this house with prayer 
when gasoline was over five dollars we said god bring that gasoline down and you look at me i'm not giving the democrats or the republicans the glory they didn't make the gas god made that oil in the ground and i give him all the glory i thank god i thank god for leaders who respond i'm not i'm not neglecting that thank god when you pray so when I tell you in the name of Jesus you got new shoes your name has been changed today and you are about to come into the biggest blessings of new beginnings that you have ever had and everybody shout hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. we're gonna go out of here with a shout aren't we we're gonna go out of here with a shout right Turn to two or three people and say, it's a new beginning. All of you are healed. God bless you. See you Wednesday night. Happy New Year. It's a new beginning. New beginnings. It's going to be a new beginning in your health. We're ending sickness. We're ending poverty. We're ending debt. We're ending depression. We are ending doubt. We are ending fear. In other words, as I spoke today, to have a new beginning, there must be an end of something. This new beginning, 2023, can you imagine the number 23 means new beginning? It is a, it is a biblical number. In fact, you can as I spoke today, Psalms 23 is something you can read and hold all this year for what God is about to do. And I prophesy over you. I speak over you as I did today. And I want to say to everybody, Wednesday night, Wednesday night, Wednesday night, Wednesday night, I am personally going to anoint. I want to anoint. I don't care how many people's there. I'm going to touch every person want to anoint. I believe that this anointing is going to break yokes. I believe every yoke that has been in anyone's life is going to be broken by the anointing this Wednesday night, the anointed Wednesday night service. I pray you are there. Six o'clock, it will be a powerful service. And for you today, I want to tell you, this is a beginning. Start, start new beginning. And today you heard about the offering. Today, I would say, I start today. I start my tithing. I start first fruits. I start now. I start my fasting. I start my prayer. It is a new beginning. I feel very, very strong. And I, I say this with reverence, but I say it with strength. Revelations has 23 chapters. And it moves me that we have lived to year 2023. Is it going to end this year? It's amazing. 23 chapters in the book of Revelation. And Revelation gives us the end. And it also gives us the beginning. The beginning of the new heaven and the new earth. So today what I would do is I would apply myself with my faith and believe God that today, I start today. I start today in my commitment in prayer. I start today in my commitment involvement. I start my day, Lord, to give to you first. And watch God begin to unveil all the things he's about to do in your life. It's time for a new beginning. You're gonna be healed. You're gonna be delivered. I'm excited that this first Sunday we spent together and that word is for you. I pray for you. Believe God for you. I want to say it again this Wednesday night. It's going to be an anointed service. I'm going to anoint. I'm going to anoint. And I'm personally going to touch with the oil of anointing. I've been instructed. I feel very strong about this. I've been instructed by the Holy Spirit to do this. And what I've been instructed is that when I put the oil upon you that will be here Wednesday night, every yoke will be broken. This is going to be a brand new beginning. 
want to say to everybody, next week we go to our regular services, 8.30, 10.30. Don't miss it. Don't miss it because it's going to be good because God's got something special for you. Welcome to a brand new year of beginnings and welcome to year 2023. I'm so glad you joined us. And remember, yes, you can.